Welcome back to Bobblehead Homestead. I am Jeff. Today is Saturday. Yep, I'm going to do another driving video even though I know better. I never claim to be a good YouTuber. Uh, anyway, so I love this Toyota Sequoia. I really do love it. Um, neighbor next door came over the other day and uh, changed out the bumper and the fender. Yeah, well, we'll go take a look at that. That beeping you hear is the only thing I don't like about the Toyota. So I got this little uh, code checker. It's got a problem with the secondary air intake jigamarole. And uh, so if I don't clear the code, it will, the car goes into limp mode and that just slows it down. Uh, you can still get up to 55 miles an hour, but it just slows it down and, and so you overdo it. Anyway, so I, um, I actually took it in and the mechanic tried to get it fixed and he didn't fix the right part and I ain't got the money to take it back. But so like every three times I start it, I have to clear the code. So yeah, I just cleared the code to get the car on so I can get the air conditioning going. It's not too bad today. Uh, 90, 91. Bluetooth FM connected. Yeah, there, there we go. Um, what was I talking about? Yeah, it's not all that, all that hot today. And we're supposed to get some rain and lower temperatures next week. So that is a good thing. I'm on my lunch break. I need to do some grocery shopping. So I am headed into Boonville real quick, and I figured I would take you along. So we're going to do that. And I won't talk for a half an hour like last time, because Boonville is only, well, we're about to find out, 10 minutes away. <laughs> and off we go. Yeah, neighbor came over, young guy. Uh, he had already taken the bumper and the fender off of my twin donor car so um that was ready to go and i don't know it took him he didn't have all the right tools he had to use my junky old tools um but i did probably less than two hours and i was annoying him by talking all kinds of stuff <laughs> while he was trying to work but yeah i'll show you a little later it's a, a little bit noticeable. There's just a slight different color tint to the parts from the other Toyota onto this one, but I don't care. This thing has uh, 213,000 miles on it. Uh, what did it have when I bought it? It had like 205, and that was over a year ago. But um, yeah, I like it. It is, uh, gets about 16 miles per gallon. Uh, yeah, I would love to have a, uh, a third vehicle. <laughs> uh, you know, a little sedan or, you know, what I really like is like a Subaru Outback. That would be cool. I've always wanted a Subaru Outback. I had a Subaru Forester. But, uh, something that gets better gas mileage so, uh, you know, I can set the cruise, go to... Russellville was, you know, 25 plus miles per gallon. That would be preferable. Uh, but yeah, got to make the money first before I can go that route. Um, speaking of future ideas, that's why I wanted to make this video. After the last one, you know, just whining and complaining. Uh, let's talk some more about my future plans. I don't know, it's like sharing them because then you create expectations that you're going to do everything you say you're going to do and sometimes it, that doesn't work but i'm going to risk it um as we just drive by the mailboxes i'm reminded that uh i do not have any way to get mailed to me right now because i don't have a mailbox and they've started uh my waldron address they've started sending it back if you send it there so uh, I'm working on it I'm working on it it's also what's holding me back from fiber optic they tried to send me the sign up form and I don't have a mailbox so I got to get a mailbox up um, yeah got to do that 
and uh, once I have a mailbox, then they'll let me sign up for a PO box, and then I'll have all that set. So I know a couple people asked about that situation, and unfortunately, right now, uh, there's a PO box in Waldron that I share with Drew, and Drew is still. I don't know if he re-upped it or not. I don't. The bill was due, and I I paid like the last two years, but I left him with the bill on on this year. Um, and I don't know if he renewed it. I think he said he was going to renew it. But, um, so if he did renew it, which I'm pretty sure he probably did, then uh, that'd be the only place he can send it. The thing is, I don't go to Waldron, you know, and he doesn't come up here. And so that's, uh, that's mess. So thank you, thank you for thinking of me. Hold off until I've got my mailbox set up and uh, have my post office box done. Maybe we can get the, it's supposed to be a lot of rain, like Monday and Tuesday or something, but maybe we can get that mailbox up next week. That would be good, because I've been jonesing for that fiber optic internet for a while. Uh, Starlink is all right, but it's uh, $140, and the uh, fiber optic, and that's not even, the fiber optic's 80 so that's 60 bucks cheaper. And it'll be a heck of a lot faster. And yeah, so I'm waiting on that. Speaking of fiber optic, once I do get to fiber optic, I think I've always been hesitant to do a weekly live show, but I think the time has come for me to do that. And an idea I've had, at least for some of them, would be to do a live show either before or after having a group dinner. You know, I got we got Black Sheep Project and and our mountain home right there. And um, I like entertaining. Uh, they, and I don't have to do all the cooking. Liz was really enjoying my oven because um, uh, they don't have access to one. But uh, so that's that's one thing I'm really thinking about is um, and then um, inviting one of the other YouTube channels or just anybody from around the area. And uh, then you can join us for the live, either before or after the dinner. You know, there's all kinds of channels around here, and you know, it take me a year to get through them all. But yeah, just create community, have a good time, have a good meal, and uh, I think that'd make for some some entertaining live shows. Also, getting uh, getting all the different channels to come over for dinner one week. One thing I don't know is when, when, uh, you, yeah, some of you out there might be smarter than me on what times are available <laughs> to go live, because everybody's got a time slot, and you don't want to step on anybody's toes, uh, it's kind of inevitable at this point, I guess, but what would be a good, good day and time, uh, for me to do a live show, and then I also want to think about you know, what would be a good day and time for other people in the area to come over for dinner? You know, like, uh, oh, well, just, I'm not leaving anybody out, but just like O'Rourke's Littlefield, you know, they, uh, they're great party hosts. I'd love to invite them to dinner, come hang out with me and, and uh, the other YouTubers on our lane. And then you gotta think about the winter too, when it gets dark, because I cannot, I've got a tiny house. I do not have a living room. I have only one chair in my house, and it's probably going to stay that way. I might have a second chair someday. I don't know. Um, so I, I'm not set up to entertain people inside. So it would have to be outdoors. And then, you know, in the winter, it's cold and dark at dinner time. So the, this might not be a year-round thing. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it's so popular and I get a million views that I can, I can set up a little YouTube studio or something, you know. And it's going to be hard for me to go live from inside my my uh, tiny house. Um, I don't have the incubators going, but they are loud. They are loud and they'll probably be going all the time and that will be hard for me to go live uh, from inside the house. So, yeah my dinner and alive might be seasonal and um, that's just how it is but I would like to do it you know starting whenever I can because let's see Micah and Liz 
Black Sheep Project, they go live on Monday nights at 7 o'clock. Uh, Jen and Wiley, our mountain home, and working with Wiley, they go live on Wednesdays and Fridays at 4 o'clock. And once I got fiber optic, they're all welcome to come, uh, come do their lives from my place. Unless, uh, I'm going to let them borrow. You know, once I got fiber optic, I've still got that Starlink. And I can uh, keep it on for maybe a month and let them try it out, see if it'd be worth it for them. But 140 bucks is just ridiculous. Um, but it, it, you know, it's better than it is better than nothing. Um, so yeah, tell me what day and time. Leave a comment. What days and what times are open for me to do a dinner and a live? We can either do the dinner before the live or after the live. You know, if we go like four to five, but I know five to six is already taken on Wednesdays and Fridays. So I have no idea when it'll be good. So that's one of the future plans that I'm looking forward to. And I'd like to do more meals. Somebody suggested uh, grilling out. I do not have a grill. I do not have a grill. Um, I do have two crock pots. And I got, I got some big skillets, and I do have a big old, um, uh, I've got a waffle maker now. Neighbors gave me a waffle maker. That'd be hard doing one at a time, though. But I do have a little grill thing, um, griddle, griddle for doing pancakes. You can do like eight pancakes at a time. So, but I do not have a gas grill or a charcoal grill. And I prefer charcoal grills. But then you got a charcoal is not free. What I really need to do is a smokehouse. Like Papa Pepper and Paul the Bearded Carpenter. I need a, a cold smokehouse that can also be a hot smokehouse. And um, if I'm going to spend money on like grills and propane or charcoal or whatever, I just uh, rather save up my money, build a smokehouse, and then I can use the wood from my own property. Um, Yep, so that's the plan there. Although in the meantime, somebody might have a grill, I don't know. But yeah, that's always good. Um, I'm not a big fan of hot dogs. Hamburgers are always good. GoPro shut off all by itself. It turns on all by itself. It turns off all by itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm in Boonville. Now I'm headed to the big box store. I was talking about food. And here I am, I'm going to the grocery store when I'm hungry. Camera is sitting in the sun, so I think that's it's overheating. Technology. Uh, yeah, first stop is done. Let's head over to my second stop, as long as it's still recording. I just ran into Mike and Lissa from Drifting Dreamers 5 and Dreaming with Drifters channels. Yep, just ran into them. Uh, everybody's in a hurry, so... I did stick a camera in their face, but I can't hold my cell phone still. So, but anyway, I'll probably put a clip in here. As I come to a stop, look both ways, and head out onto the road. One, uh, yeah, every time I go to town, you might as well pick up some, uh, some chicken feed. So, I normally don't get it there. I normally get it somewhere else, but they close at noon on Saturdays. So, this will uh, do me well until I get there next week. Alright. Yeah, this is one of the benefits of Boonville. If you want to call it that. Oh, I got a, my back window. I have to roll down that back window so I can open the back hatch. That's another thing that's a little bit irritating. I will fix that someday. <laughs> I have to order a new part. And then it's a whole pain to take that back panel apart and rejigger it, and yeah. But I will get that someday. See, the, I'm talking about all the stuff I'll be doing someday. And, oh, where are they? They parked. Yeah, this thing is not the easiest thing to park in the world, dude. It's not too bad. It's better than that Suburban. Sorry, dude. All right, time to get some groceries. And uh, pro tip, 
uh, this one at least, I think most, most Walmarts have like a clearance aisle where they just got a, and it's usually in some corner somewhere. Sometimes it's up front, but I, uh, that's where I got a $12 brand new crock pot the other day. So, you know, you see something like that and you can't pass it up. And, um, yeah, I'd like to, you know, barbecue, uh, you know, shredded chicken sandwiches and, um, uh, in the winter chili and my chicken pot pie stew on biscuit stuff i can do that for groups and so yeah having two crock pots will be very handy all right gotta go shopping i'll catch you on the way home grocery shopping is done i got some uh pancake mix some breakfast sausage some hash browns i want to do a test run do a little uh breakfast test run before i invite neighbors over for uh Oh yeah, breakfast for dinner? Why not? That's something that I can do. Um, all right, let's get out of here and I can start talking on the way home. I don't know what this Nissan's doing. But uh, yeah, one thing about, I need to get my kitchen together. I do need to do that. Those cabinets, the lower cabinets are set in place with the drawers in them. So most of my kitchen stuff is still sitting in boxes and tubs in the kitchen so yeah that's going to be uh one of the top things on my list once i've uh given up the given up the other job is to get that kitchen situated that'd be nice and then i don't have to do all the kicking uh cooking yeah i think i said that already yeah i'm sure uh jen and liz and micah and and wiley I don't know how much Cook and Micah and Wiley do, but uh, they would be welcome to use my kitchen uh, to make some group meals. And um, I can't have them do that while I'm working though. So once I'm freed up, uh, hopefully we can do that more often. I got no problem sharing my kitchen. Oh, yellow, I'm going through it anyway. No cops anywhere. That's good. Yeah, I don't want my groceries to go flying out of the back seat. So yeah, looking towards the future, some dinner and some lives, and you're gonna tell me what night might be a good good uh, night to do that. Um, one thing, I gotta put my chickens to bed at dark, so that can kind of put a wrench into things. And I like doing it before it actually does get dark, because it's easier for me to walk around. Although, yeah, I've done it many, many times after dark with flashlight, ain't no big deal. Um, and then in the winter, um, I do not, you know, I don't have a dining room table or room. I don't even have room for people to sit around and eat because you're talking uh, 14 people. <laughs> 16, and, and, yeah, and other neighbors, yeah, so, um, yeah. I, I've got a great kitchen. I don't. I'm not set up for entertainment. No. Um, except outside, I got a picnic table and a little portable table. So entertaining outside is something I can do when the weather cooperates. All right. What else uh, coming up in the future? Uh, I do want to start hatching and uh, selling some baby chicks. Hatching and keeping. Uh, a bunch of baby chicks for me to raise myself. Something else I plan on doing is um, uh, any money I make from baby chick sales, I'm gonna put back into the business. And that means getting more chickens. Um, my uh, black copper Moran's flock was pretty much wiped out and I haven't been able to rebuild it and I need to start over. I need to start over. So hopefully this winter, or late fall, I can get some hatching eggs from one of the top breeders. And uh, I want both uh, dark egg colors and, um, and you know, close to the standards of perfection. And those will not be cheap hatching eggs at all. And I'd like to get as many of them as possible. Uh, ideally, you know, the, the pros, the pros will tell you start off with 100 uh, baby chicks and uh, select the best ones from there to start your breeding program and uh, so I'd like to try something like that 
I don't know if I'll be able to afford that many uh, Moran's eggs. And there's already a few breeders I've got in mind. Uh, there's one in the Hot Springs area. There's one in Oklahoma. There's two in Oklahoma. Uh, Paragon Ridge Ranch, they're another channel. They got some black copper Moran's. So, um, and they've got them from a variety of places. So I will, I haven't picked two yet. We'll see if anybody's got them available, what their prices are. But I would like to start over on a black copper Moran's flock. I do still have blue black splash copper Moran's from, uh, they originally came from Deer Run Farm in Maryland. Um, I got hatching eggs and baby chicks. And so I've got enough of them, I can rebuild that. Those are not, um, uh, blue and splash are not standards of perfection. And uh, they, they can, some of them do lay some really nice dark eggs. They lay a lot of speckled eggs. And I think the blues and the splash morans are, those are beautiful birds. So, and I can still use those for olive eggers. Holy cow, four, five cops and an ambulance. Uh -oh. They're not driving fast. Let's hope that's a good, good signal. So uh, yeah, I'd like to start over with black copper morons. I'd also like to uh, start uh, breeding a white egg breed. So a breed that lays white eggs um and yeah there's uh not a whole lot of different varieties uh, the most famous are leghorns i've had leghorns before they're popular i don't know that i want to they're flighty and yeah I'm not sure about the leghorns but um and delusions those are interesting they lay white eggs so i'll be um you know i've got some ideas on that and we'll just see what I can get because I don't want to just go to a hatchery. I might end up that doing that on the white egg breeds, but I'd rather go to a, you know, an established breeder and get some good genetics to start out with. So hopefully that'll be coming up, you know, later. <laughs> Is me uh, expanding my offerings, and of course I'll still have the Whiting True Blues, the blue egg breed. I'll still have uh, the the Whiting True Blues crossed with the Morans for green eggs. And um, yeah, groovy egg farm. It's gonna be a thing. It's gonna be a thing. I am, yeah. I'll still be groovy eggs farm for my business name and chicken breeding business. But uh, I can't get rid of Bobblehead Homestead. You can't get rid of me. I couldn't get rid of me either. <laughs> Um, what else can I talk about in the future? Oh, one thing my sister asked me about. What about the book you were writing? Yeah, um, that's gone on hold. And it'll probably be... See, I, I want to write a book on how to breed chickens to lay green eggs. And there's not a book out there on how to breed chickens to lay green eggs. So I've actually started writing one. I want it to be full of pictures. And I don't have any, um, I have more work to do. I have more work to do to prove that I know what I'm talking about. I don't have any hens that are laying really dark green eggs right now. Um, you know, my program got put behind, uh, yeah, not hatching last year much, not hatching this year much. So I've got to breed some more hens that lay the really dark green eggs so I can get pictures of them and um and then i can say well see i can do it if i can do it you can do it here's how you do it so that'll be um at least a year before i start working on the book again i mean i can do uh text stuff but i want the book to have a lot of pictures so when i say all right you want to create a dog um chickens that lay dark green eggs well you got to get a breed that lays dark brown eggs. And so I'll list the breeds that lay dark brown eggs and I'll wanna have pictures of what all those breeds look like. And then you gotta breed them with a, with a breed that lays blue eggs. So I wanna have pictures of all the breeds that lay blue eggs and uh, so people can look at them. And um, uh, then I want a lot of pictures of eggs 
and a lot of pictures of chickens. So that's going to be, I don't have all these breeds. So I'm going to have to find other people who have those breeds to get pictures from them. And I don't know how all that's going to work, but I'll figure it out someday when I have time. I don't have time. Um, all right, what else is coming up? Uh, there's a lot more land clearing. Yep, yep. I should be doing that all day, every day right now. Because uh, chickens will, like, like I was saying on the last one, my morans are not laying at all. And they do not have much shade. So I need to get a lot of that jungle cleared out so that I can move the chickens back into the, back into the shade. Um, yep, that'll be a good job for this fall and winter when it cools down. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to go out there and do it. I tell it, I'm motivated to get outside, walk on my door in the morning, and have all day to work on whatever I want to work on. But that's not happening right now, but I will get there. And so that'll be a big thing, is get more of the jungle cleared so that I can uh, keep the chickens in the shade. What else we got going on? Uh, I'd love to make enough money someday to put up, like, you know, actual uh, fencing so that I can get a dog. Yeah, not at the top of my list, but uh, eventually, I don't want to do the whole property. I don't need to do the whole property. But I would like to do uh, at least two acres. Uh, probably, yeah, at least two acres with uh, metal fencing that will keep in, you know, Great Pyrenees and Anatolian Shepherds, or mixes of those two. Um, and uh, that's not gonna be cheap, that's gonna be a lot of work. I'm gonna have to hire a lot of it done, blah, 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 blah. But uh, I've never had a dog, I am gonna get a dog, but I do not wanna be one of those irresponsible people that lets their dogs run all over the neighborhood. And um, so I, for me, I gotta have fencing up. <laughs> Mike is out working. Yep, I am almost home. Oh yeah, people always keep telling me they're gonna steal your chickens. This is a dead end gravel lane. One way in, one way out. Uh, you can't do a snatch and grab on chickens. Uh, you might get one, but or maybe two, but ain't nobody going to park in front of my house and walk back and forth with, uh, with chickens in their hands. And they're definitely not going to do it at night. And they'd have to figure out how to turn my electric fence off anyway. Um, and then they, you've got to have a cage or something like that to keep them in. So they'd have to, it would have to be a well-planned out heist for people to come and steal my chickens. Ain't nobody just going to be driving by and say, oh, look, chickens, I think I'll steal some of them. Because it's a dead-end lane and ain't nobody driving by that's uh, looking to steal chickens. So, yeah, don't worry about uh, chicken thieves. I mean, it could happen. Anything could happen. I've been ripped off before. Never had chickens stolen, though. Um... So yeah, no, no worries about uh, chicken thieves. Cause you need a crew of like, if you want to get all my chickens, you're gonna need a crew of at least three people. You're gonna need a big old truck or a van or something to throw the chickens in. Gotta have somebody holding the door um, so the chickens you already stole don't get back out. And um, and those chickens, they're gonna cause you start going in there in the middle of the night. They're gonna cause a ruckus and wake me up. And, uh, and everybody's, this is 2024, this is 2024, everybody's got game cameras and cameras everywhere. I've got a car sitting out there that, uh, that I can lock and put a camera in and, and uh, point it out to the front, uh, front lane. And so don't be coming here with any nefarious uh, ideas because you'll get caught. <laughs> you will not be successful. All right, I'm home. Uh, Got to get some groceries inside before they melt. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everything. And take it easy.